In this video, you'll see how to use Amazon Personalize Recommenders for common business use cases. With Amazon Personalize, you can build machine learning or ML personalization models with your data and apply business rules using filters. Amazon Personalize is a fully managed ML service that uses your data to generate item recommendations for your users. You can select from a library of personalization algorithms that are tailored to common business use cases. To get started, let's create a dataset group. The dataset group will contain the datasets we import into Amazon Personalize to train our ML models. Next, we'll choose the domain. If we choose e-commerce or video on demand, Amazon Personalize will handle all the training and retraining of our models. Alternatively, we can create a custom dataset group and train our models manually. We'll select e-commerce. Let's create our dataset group. Next, we'll create an interactions dataset. This dataset stores historical and real-time data from interactions between users and the items we'll be making recommendations for. Let's give our dataset a name. We must provide a schema for our interactions dataset. We'll use an existing schema that was created previously. The dataset schema allows Amazon Personalize to understand our data. Our schema is a JSON structure in the Avro format. It has a number of fields that indicate the columns in the dataset that we're going to be importing. Four fields are required for a domain dataset group. They are item ID, user ID, event type, and timestamp. These fields relate to when a user interacted with an item for a particular event type. The event types required for e-commerce are view and purchase. Discount is a custom field used in this demonstration to indicate if users are interacting with discounted products. Let's go ahead and create our interactions dataset. Next, we'll create an import job to import our historical interactions data, which is stored in an Amazon Simple Storage Service, or Amazon S3, bucket. Let's give our import job a name. We'll need to specify the Amazon S3 location of our interactions dataset. Let's head over to Amazon S3 and open our already uploaded interactions CSV file. We'll run a query on the file to explore its contents. Let's run a select SQL query that returns all columns. In our query results, we see the same item ID, user ID, event type, timestamp, and discount columns that we saw in our interactions schema. Each row of data is a user interaction with an item. Let's go back and copy the Amazon S3 URI of our interactions CSV file. Now let's return to Amazon Personalize and paste in what we copied. Next, we need to specify an AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, role for Amazon Personalize so it can access our S3 bucket. We'll enter an already prepared IAM role that has the necessary permissions. We'll quickly switch to Identity and Access Management, or IAM, to copy our role ARN. Let's finish creating the import job. While the interactions dataset is being uploaded, we can create import jobs for our items metadata and users metadata. Let's begin with the items data. We'll give our items dataset a name. Again, we'll use an existing schema. The e-commerce domain recommender has three required items columns, which are item ID, price, and category L1. Category L2 is an optional nested level category. The product description field is marked as textual, true. This tells Amazon Personalize that this field contains natural language text. The gender field denotes if an item is targeted towards male or female users. Check the documentation for other reserved column names for domain dataset groups. The promoted custom field denotes the promotion status of an item. Let's go ahead and create our dataset. Now we need to configure our item's dataset import job. Let's give our import job a name. Let's go to our Amazon S3 location to view our items dataset. Again, we'll choose to query our data. Let's run a select SQL query to view all the columns. Once again, the data columns mirror the fields we saw in the item schema. The first few products are women's backpacks.
Let's copy our Amazon S3 URI and paste it in Amazon Personalize. We'll use the same IAM role that we used previously. Finally, let's start our import. Finally, we'll create an import job for our user's dataset. First, let's give our user's dataset a name. Again, we'll use an existing schema. The only required field in the user's dataset is user ID. Our schema contains user ID and custom fields for age and gender. Next, we'll configure our user's import job. Again, let's go to our Amazon S3 location to view our dataset. We'll run a select SQL query to view all columns. The three columns, user ID, age, and gender, match our user schema. Let's copy the Amazon S3 URI and return to Amazon Personalize. We'll use the same IAM role we used previously. Finally, we'll start our user's import job. Our three datasets are now active. We will now create some e-commerce recommenders for our datasets. We can choose from a list of available e-commerce recommender recipes in our domain dataset group type. Customers who viewed X also viewed is designed for use on product detail pages. The frequently bought together recommender is for cross-selling on cart or checkout pages. Best sellers train a popularity model based on purchase events. Most viewed trains a popularity model based on view events. Recommended for you is based on a specific user's past viewing and purchase behavior. We're going to select two recommenders, most viewed and recommended for you. We'll name each recommender. We have options to add advanced configurations and tags. We'll move on and create the recommenders. After several minutes, Amazon Personalize has created trained machine learning models for both recommenders, based on our data. Let's look at the Recommended for You recommender. The recommender metrics were calculated by Amazon Personalize through the process of training and validating the model against held out data. 90% of the data goes towards training the model, while 10% is held out for a validation process. The metric numbers are all between 0 and 1.0. The higher the value, the better the model is performing. For further details on interpreting metrics, be sure to visit the Amazon Personalized documentation links in the description for this video. Let's test this recommender. In order to get personalized recommendations, we need to specify a user ID. By default, the top 25 item recommendations are returned for our selected user. The items are ranked from most relevant to least relevant. For a more visual demonstration, Let's switch to a demo e-commerce web application built on top of e-commerce recommenders available in GitHub. A link to the GitHub repo is provided in the description for this video. When we first access the website as an anonymous user, the application displays the results of the most viewed recommender as popular products. When we sign in as a user from our data set, we get a more personalized user experience. We now see results based on the shopping trends of this shopper who is a 24-year-old female interested in products in the apparel, footwear, and accessories categories. Now let's imagine we have specific products that we want to promote to our users. We can use our domain recommenders with a feature called Promotional Filters. Let's go back to the Personalized console and return to the Overview page for our dataset group. We can apply business rules to create our promotional filter. We'll give our filter a name. We can build a filter expression using an interactive tool or input an expression. We'll input an expression that is already written. It's a composite filter that excludes already purchased products for the user and includes products that are flagged as promoted in the item's dataset. Let's create the filter. After a couple of minutes, our filter is ready for use. Let's try it with the Recommended for You recommender. We'll enter the same user ID we did previously. 
This time, we'll indicate the percentage of items in the returned 25 items we want to be from our promotional filter. Let's enter 40%. Next, we'll select our newly created promotional filter. Now let's get our recommendations. Now, of our 25 recommendations, 40% should be constrained to this promotional filter. We have a new column in the recommendation response that indicates which items were promoted. These items are randomly distributed through the results. Let's return to the demo e-commerce web application. To test our new promotional filter, we'll refresh the page. The product mix is slightly different. Notice that some items have a promoted banner across the top of the product image. Now let's choose a different shopper. We'll pick a shopper who's interested in electronics. As expected, we see different products recommended and promoted where all products are relevant to the user. You've just seen how to use Amazon Personalized Recommenders for common business use cases and how you can use promotional filters for more fine-grained control over recommended items. You can learn more about this topic in the description and links for this video. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.